Okay, guys, I'm back for a retro wrestling review. Uh, I took about a year off from these. I'm going to start them back. I'm going to hope for once a week, but definitely there will be at least one of these per month. Uh, to give a refresher what these are, these are, I look at a, WC, a WWE or WCW show and, from the past. And it doesn't even have to be the really past. It can be just from like 2011-ish or something like that. Or as long as I've never reviewed it and stuff like that. And with three exceptions, ECW shows. But those three exceptions are December, December 2006. And the first and last ECW pay review because those are historic. So I will eventually look at them. So the last one of these I did was last May, I believe it was, and that was Mayhem 1999. So it was the WWE's turn, and with the WWE's turn, I returned to King of the Ring, King of the Ring 1996, which took place on the 22nd of June 1996 from the Mecca Arena in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, an eight-match card. So our maximum number of stars is 40. The opening contest is the King of the Ring semifinal, as it's Wildman Mark Merrill versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. Uh, good match. It's a four-star match. It's, I think, the best match on this card. Uh, Owen Hart's on commentary for this. That's interesting. Uh, so, yeah, lots of back-and-forth stuff. You know, Mark Merrill famously makes Steve Austin bust Steve Austin's lip open by going for a prawn hold, and he... His feet kicked Austin's lip, and it busted his lip open. But Austin won to Stone Cold Stunner. And advanced to the final. To, uh, so, four stars there. Austin actually did legitimately leave. Went to the hospital and got stitched up, and then came back for the final. So, the second match. The second semifinal of the King of the Ring. As it's Jake the Snake Roberts versus Vader. Uh, the biggest story of this match is uh, Jake Roberts' age. He's 41 years old at the time. Trying to have one last run at the top. Or a run at the top or just something. Uh, they bring up he's never that he never held a title in the WWE. Predominantly because Jake Roberts never really needed a championship. Uh, this is a okay match. I mean, it's not good. It's, and it's it's passable, but it's one and a half stars. Uh, Jake the Snake goes for a DDT on Vader, who hits it. He hits Vader with DDT, but Vader pulls the referee in front of him, and Jake wins by DQ, and Vader assaults him, injuring his ribs. One and a half stars. So then we get the space between the semifinals and the finals. We get four mat as we get. Four matches from that. And our first of those four is a tag team title match. As it's the Smoking Guns with their new manager, Sonny, who is coming off turning on the Godwins at Beware of Dogs 3 for All, and they're defending against the Godwins. Uh, okay match here. Two stars. Could have been better. Not bad. Uh, the Smoking Guns win with a roll-up of all things. Two stars. Not a bad match. Could have been better, but wasn't bad. Uh, so then we get the Ultimate Warrior versus Jerry the King Lawler. Uh, this match wasn't anything, because it's basically a very old-school warrior match. Uh, he gets beat up for the majority of it, then he basically just no-sells Jerry Lawler's power driver and then beats him with a shoulder tackle. Uh, so, yeah, no stars here. Uh, warrior could get... You know, people could have gotten good match out of Warrior, but King wasn't one of them. Uh, really, it w Warrior's three best matches, I've always said, have been Rick Rude at SummerSlam 89, Hawk Hogan at WrestleMania 6, and Randy Savage at WrestleMania 7. So really, that's the three best matches I've Warrior ever had in the WWE. So no stars for that. So then we get the WWE Intercontinental Championship match. Ahmed Johnson challenging Goldust. <laughs> uh... This is a interesting match. It's a very good match. It's a three-star match. I think it's arguably Ahmed Johnson's best match in the WWE. But keep in mind, his WWE career ended up being uh, very riddled by injury. Uh, so it's very hard to tell 
where he could have gone had he not been constantly injured. But this is, but I do think this is his best overall match. Uh, he wins with the Pearl over Plunge after Goldust tries CPR on him, uh, and he wins the Intercontinental Championship. Because this is back when Goldust is being the very off the top thing that he generally does that he used to do back then before he became a comic character. So then we get the Undertaker versus Mankind, which was actually before Undertaker uh, Goldust and Ahmed, but Undertaker Mankind in their first pay per view meeting. Uh, okay, match here. It's a three star match. Uh, Taker Mankind always have good matches. Uh, had good matches. Finish comes with uh, Mankind's got the mandible claw on. Paul Bear's on the apron of the urn. And he accidentally hits the Undertaker, but maybe not. Uh, and then that allows Mankind to win after the Mandible Claw. So a three-star match. Uh, so then it's the final match of the King of the Ring tournament. As it's Jake the Snake Roberts versus Stone Cold Steve Austin, who had come back. And Girl Monsoon allowed Jake Roberts to get, to do this match. Austin jumps him before the bell rings. He starts taking off the table on Jake Roberts' ribs. Girl Monsoon comes in to stop the match, but Jake doesn't want it stopped. So Monsoon lets him continue. Jake gets the stunner, and Austin gets the win. Uh, Jake eats the stunner. Austin gets the win. And Austin is the 996 King of the Ring. And in cut the promo that made his career. Honestly, the only person I've ever felt that the King of the Ring itself made was Kurt Angle. But Austin, winning the King of the Ring didn't make him, as he wasn't even on SummerSlam. He was on the free-for-all. But the promo he cut is what put him on the map. It was the Austin 316 promo. That's what put Austin on the path to superstardom, not winning the King of the Ring itself. So, uh, one star for the story it told, but still not that great of a match. So then we get the main event, a rematch from Beware a Dog, as it's Shawn Michaels versus the British Bulldog for the WWE Championship, with Mr. Perfect as the special guest referee, but he's made the outside referee for reasons. And Earl Hebner is the inside referee. The guy, the referee who actually was at the centerpiece of the controversy that surrounded this match in the first place because of that double pinfall. Uh, this is a very good match. It's a three and a half star match. Uh, Michaels wins with the sweet chin music. Perfect goes in to help Earl Hubner count, but Owen Hart pulls him out. And then Earl Hubner makes the count. And Michaels retains. Cap Camp Cornette beat up Shawn Michaels and Ahmed Johnson, and the Ultimate Warrior comes in. That's how the show ends, and it's announced that Michaels, Ahmed, and the Warrior will face Camp Cornette at the International Incident pay-per-view. But, of course, Warrior left shortly after King of the Ring, and then Psycho Sid came back, and he was replaced in that match. So, yeah. So, out of 40 possible stars, this show gets an 18. So, it actually is right near being a C. It's two stars away from being a C, so that will be a C, so it's technically a very high C-. minus. Uh, it's a very high C-. minus. Warrior and Lawler not being on this show would have actually helped this show probably be better. Uh, so, Warrior and Lawler is the only thing that really brings this show down, because really, other than that, everything is passable on this show. Uh, so, that's it for this retro review, which I'll put in my retro wrestling review playlist. But, uh, the next retro wrestling review will be a WCW pay-per-view. Don't know which one, I don't plan these in advance, so whichever one I choose to review is what I'll look at. Uh, that might be up next week, might be up next month. It all depends on how I decide to handle these retro reviews. Uh, but I do know Power Rangers Ninja Steel returns on... Next Saturday, the 12th, so those will be back, too, with episode, I believe it's 8, possibly 9, I don't really, I think it's episode 9, maybe? Uh, so that'll be back, uh, I can start those back up. So, if you like this video, like button down there, subscribe button down there, you can leave a comment if you want, I read all of them, uh, and thank you for watching, bye!